So after hundreds of requests, today I've finally gotten around to testing the Lodge carbon steel pan. So I've actually had this pan for months and months and months. And it's been sitting in a pile of things that I need to get around to. And honestly, I haven't been overly excited to do it. I love Lodge. And I say that all the time on this channel. I think it is the best valued cast iron on the market. Carbon steel, on the other hand, is something that I take quite personally. I really enjoy using a high-end French made, predominantly, car carbon steel pan. And they come non-seasoned, they are smooth to the finish, and mostly I'm talking about Dubaye and Matfer. These are pans in which I have not been able to find any equivalent. And, you know, to be honest with you, I'm not totally sure by judging a book by its cover if the Lodge is going to be the same quality of pan. But, you know, I sell Lodge, I promote Lodge, I actually have some of these in our stores now to sell. I need to know how good these are. I'm sure they're gonna be adequate they are what they are. They are carbon steel, a decent weight. They are Lodge's traditional kind of candy coating, uh, vegetable based nonstick, which works adequately fine to start with. So I'm, I'm sure it's going to be of a decent quality, but just how good is it going to be? And do you think this is going to be able to surprise me? Well, let's see. So I'm going to take the Lodge carbon steel. I'm going to take a uh, matte fur carbon steel, which is already seasoned. And just for kicks, the OXO carbon steel that is a heat treated pan that uh, I have now got nicely seasoned, um, you know, for a Chinese counterpart. So we're going to have an American made, a Chinese made, and heavily biased here, French made. Um, and just so we're super clear, this by far is my favorite pan. I love this pan, it works beautifully. Uh, I love Dubaié also for the mineral B. You know, I am heavily biased. I will always tell people if this is a pan to buy without question, uh, one of the two brands made of France, uh, I, I love them. So what I'm doing here is trying to just be observant. I have a bias, but I'm being observant. We're going to cook uh, some fried onions in these three pans. We are then going to cook some chickpeas without much fat or any fat really at all, probably to start with, and just see how the carbonization goes, because as they start to cook and, and kind of brown, because they're already pre-cooked, pressure cooked, um, but we're, we're kind of crisping them to make them uh, kind of crispy to put onto a salad or have a snack, uh, they leave quite a bit of carbon. And so how does that stain the pan and what's the effect of the carbon on the pan? And then from there, I'm going to cook some tofu because it's very, very fragile. Uh, it can stick quite badly if it, the pan isn't in good shape for, from a seasoning standpoint. Uh, and what's left over as a residue when we're done. So let's get into this. Okay, so all three pans are now on the heat preheating. I'm just about to put the onions on. But uh, just to go over the details of these pans. So our lodge pan that we've got right here. This guy is three pounds and two ounces. And in Canadian dollars, you pay $86. So I think it's somewhere in kind of the high 40s down in the US, but it's 86 Canadian dollars. Uh, the OXO guy here, uh, it's $80. Uh, all these prices are from Amazon, by the way, so kind of the most generic place to find these guys. Uh, $80 and he's two pounds and 10 ounces. Um, so a little bit less weight than the, uh, the uh, Lodge. So the Lodge is the most, the heaviest one so far except for the mat fur. So the mat fur is three pounds and three ounces, but it's $142, uh, this pan specifically, uh, on Amazon. So it's the most expensive by a long way. You can find uh, Mineral B for quite a lot less for whatever reason. Right now, this 10 inch pan of, from mat fur on Amazon is really expensive, uh, but you can find in the high, 90s uh, in maybe low 100s, uh, the com comparable pan from uh, the buyer. Uh, so everything's kind of in the safe price range. This guy here is a little bit more expensive than need be, um, but it is what it is. Uh, the weight 
uh, progressively goes up from the OXO to the Lodge to the Matte Fur. Uh, we'll see if that matters. Weight does matter, but we'll see if it actually translates in this experiment today. Uh, so I'm going to get the onions onto the pans. Okay, so I'd say we're getting to a point here that uh, we're, we're looking good. So the matte fur has really browned more evenly all the way across. Uh, the results are what I like to see. A um, little more browning in the oxo pan. And the lodge one here looks cooked, but no browning. And, but you know, does that matter at the end of the day? Um, I personally like the way they look in the mat fur. Um, I would probably take the OXO second, maybe. Uh, but I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to put a little bit of salt on these guys just to flavor them up a little bit. And then I'm going to taste them and we're going to try. All right. Get the power off those guys. So as I would expect with a lodge pan, the non-stickability right out of the gate is awesome. So it compares to, you know, this matte fur that is well seasoned. Uh, the OXO that uh, came heat treated uh, and was quite well um, non-stick, well non-stick right out of the gate. Uh, and it is taken to seasoning really well. So it's worked out well. So all three of them work the same way. The results are, are interesting, how they've turned out the way they have. Um, but let's start with, I'll go from brown to lightest. The uh, Lodge definitely has the lightest finish to it. It's gonna be hot. Mm, yep, so the mat for are spectacular. Buttery, you know, I just put in a little bit of salt. It's got that caramelized texture to the outside and they're just, just the right amount of of, of um, texture, um, um, fleshiness, hard fleshiness, I guess, to the inside of the onion. It's awesome. Um, really, really happy. Okay, so the OXO looks uh, drier. And it tastes a bit drier too. So um, not as much moisture in them. Definitely, the pans are the same diameter, but this is such a splayed little guy in the, uh, in the mat fur. There could be more condensed energy around the pan. You'd think that would overcook it, but still really moist. Um, the Oxo ones are, are good. They're just not as good. Okay, then moving on to the Lodge. Hmm, they're not caramelized. So they're not as tasty as the matte fur, but they're well cooked. They're, they're totally fine. They're actually moister than the OXO one. Moist, moister, moister. Um, yeah, I prefer them over the OXO. The OXO has, has cooked them too much. Uh, that could be the thinness of the pan. It's just allowed too much heat to come through and it's just kind of overcooked them. They're not overcooked. They just are a little drier than the, uh, the Lodge. The Lodge don't have any caramelization where the matte fur is really tasty. Yeah, really, really tasty. So there's a big taste difference between the matte fur and the Lodge, which is really surprising. Like I said, the Lodge is cooked just fine. Of course, it's adequately cooked. It's not overcooked. It's not burnt. Um, wonderful texture. They're, they're well done. It's really nicely cooked food. Um, just personally, I like to have that, that caramelized flavor in my onions and that's a personal preference. If that's not what you're going for, then the, the Lodge has done a better job. If you want that flavor profile from the caramelization, the mat first done a better job where I think the OXO just doesn't really meet these two. These two, the Lodge and the mat fur are really, really great. 
and the oxo is just a little overcooked. So let's move on. We're going to now cook some chickpeas. Okay, so I've got my chickpeas. I've got these pans. I just cleaned the onions out. They still have a little bit of the oil left in them from before. And I've got them up at a seven. So I've got them hotter because we're trying to get these crispy. Right, we're, they're already pre-cooked. So we actually want to see if we can carbonize these guys a little bit. So I want to get them kind of brown, almost a little bit of blackening to them, just so they get a bit sticky to the pan. Uh, and we create some carbon. I'm just gonna get some reactions from that. So we're gonna let these guys cook away. Okay, so those guys have all cooked up quite well. Um, you know, I would, they're all kind of brown the same sort of way. Maybe the oxo is a little bit more cooked or, or blackened, browned. Um, there's not really one over the other. Uh, something that's interesting, so hold the handles here. The handle on the lodge, still quite good. Handle on the mat fur, way too hot. And of course, silicone cover on the oxo. So that's not a problem, but uh, yeah, no, I can't hold the mat for one anymore. The lodge is totally fine, which is quite nice. Uh, okay, so those guys are cooked, nice and hardened. Something I really enjoy to do now, it also uh, messes with the, uh, the pan surfaces, is I put on a little bit of uh, maple syrup. So, you know, I'm not seeing any major carbon issues here, which is quite interesting, that's great. And, uh, but we're gonna make it sticky. And this kind of makes it messy um, when it comes to cleaning this pan afterwards. So we sweeten up those chickpeas. This is a snack that I love to make for my kids. I've said this many, many times. You put on a tiny bit of salt. So interestingly, so these three pans, when I put the uh, maple syrup on, the mat for one, it's got the same diameter as I was talking about, but there's, it's more splayed, the cooking surface is smaller, um, and it, it seemed to get a lot hotter. So it kind of, it seemed to kind of burn the maple syrup more than these other two, which is kind of interesting. So but let's give those guys Try. We're going to start from the oxo. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tastes like expected. A little bit crunchy. These are better when they're cooled and dried. But yummy. Mmm. Even crunchier. That's yummy. This is, this is a bit soggy comparatively. The lodge has the outside more uh, crunchy. But this is interesting. This has changed a funny color. And it really felt, it smelt like it was burning when I put this on. These two, totally not. A lot more kind of burning. Kind of smells that too. Exactly the same temperature, everything the same. Um, the chickpeas look like they cook the same way. Yep, they taste a little bit burnt. So the shape of that pan is heating up faster than the shape of the other two pans. So not bad, just a tiny bit of a brownie sort of flavor to it. So. Let's ex I'm going to empty these out and we're going to examine the surfaces. Okay, so got those clean. 
That was just scrubbing it with chainmail. So I scrubbed each one of these guys with chainmail. And what I did find is that the OXO had cooled faster and had had more stickiness stuck onto it. Not a big deal, easy to clean, um, but it definitely had cooled faster. The matte fur had held its heat. It was really hot when I put it into the water. Um, so everybody cleaned really, really well. So no problems there whatsoever. Um, you know, maybe a little bit of, uh, of buildup, maybe just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of, of carbon buildup, a little bit more on each pan. Like this pan was brand new, remember? And it's got a little bit of carbon staining, um, but that carbon is uh, just a stain. There's, uh, there's no texture there. So I've taken it off with the chain mail. So the next thing that we're gonna do is that we are going to fry some tofu. This is a lot more delicate. Uh, we've going on a six, so just a medium high. Uh, and we're gonna use a little bit of grapeseed oil and just do a really nice super delicate cook. So this is gonna be like if you were cooking fish, uh, same idea, uh, you know, fish and, and tofu needs to be cared for the same way when it's being cooked. You need to be, make sure your heat is nice and consistent and even and not too hot and not too cold. Uh, and uh, so let's get these pans preheated and then we'll move into the tofu. So. So I've tried to cut these guys in the thickness, quite even. Okay, so we've got three pieces of tofu in each one of those. We're just going to let those brown for, I'd say about three minutes on the first side and maybe two minutes on the other side. So here we go. Okay, so we're gonna start flipping these guys over. We'll start here from the oxo. Onto the lodge. Probably should have used a little bit more oil here, but you know, end of the day, it's not a problem. The oil that I used and the previous mm -hmm. cooking. The best nonstick release that I had was with the oxo. The heat that we had had previously in the matte fur has created a bit of a carbon spot, and I had some carbon actually release. So I've got some blackness from cooking the uh, the chickpeas, and so there's that's a little bit of a problem. I did scrub that pretty hard, um, but it still took some of that off. So. In, in hindsight, cooking those chickpeas at a lower temperature in the mat fur would have been ideal. It didn't seem to matter much whatsoever for uh, these two guys, for the lodge and the oxo, but uh, the mat fur, just the shape of the pan seems to really condensing some heat and it's getting hotter it seems. Not, well, yeah, it is actually browning. Those guys are a little bit more brown um, than these guys a little bit more cooked through, I would say. So the mat fur is definitely cooking a little bit more, but um, you know, we're kind of talking about the lodge today, and that's kind of what we're trying to figure out: is it does the lodge fit within um, you know cookware that I would want to promote and sell? Right now, this is cooking nice and evenly, nice and brown. You know, fairly good stick release. Um, we have very little oil um, for a you know non-fatty food. So, you know, the lodge is doing its job really, really well. Everything it's done today has performed adequately. Um, you know, I think a pan for this price, um, it's doing exactly what it needs to do. Uh, I am 100% convinced that this pan would perform over time. I know the lodge coating, it stands up very, very, very well, and you can build a really good coating on it. Uh, I was concerned about the candy coating shell, that, that textured shell in which they have on all of their, their cookware, even their black lock, has that texture uh, that I'm not a big fan of. I don't love it. Um, I, I, and I don't really have a good reason that I don't love it. I just don't love it because I don't like the texture. I love the smoothness of a, 
a carbon steel pan or of like a Finex pan or a Stargazer pan or a Field pan, Lancaster pan. They just, that smoothness of them is just really nice to use. When you have a tool across the surface, it feels good. Um, and I find the release is, is excellent. Um, however, that said, like I said, I don't have a really good excuse. I'm just not a big fan, uh, but there's no good reason why at this time. Like this is doing its job 100% fine. There's no reason why I shouldn't like this. It's working totally fine. You know, it's, right now, it's working better than the uh, the mapper um, for its release. You know, now now things are working just fine with this mapper. Everything's come off properly fine. Um, go to the Oxo one more time. That's really worked out quite well too. So, you know, everything is doing its job really well. Um, like I was saying, a little bit less heat in the map for maybe, but the Lodge and the Oxo in this experiment are both doing very well. So there's nice even consistency across the board here. So I'm gonna get that out. And then we've got the map for the Lodge in the middle. And the oxo, turn the heat off. Okay, so we've got the mat fur, the lodge, and the oxo. You know, all three of these guys are cooked the same way. The beginning of the mat fur was not amazing as it had some carbon come off, um, but the cooking consistency has been excellent. So that's worked out really well for all three of those. Okay, so a quick cleanup there of that lodge pan, and it's in great shape. So I would do a quick post seasoning of this. Uh, and then ready to go the next time. So I, I really like this pen. It's actually worked out really well. You know, the, the mat fur for some things I like better. The Oxo is a totally adequate pen. Um, it's a bit lighter, so I do like weight to my cookware. Uh, I, that's why I love the mat fur pen. But you know, I've got no qualms with this pen. I was a little bit hesitant with it. <laughs> Maybe that's an understatement. Um, but I don't know why I was. I don't know why I had just been staring at this pan for so long and not actually using it. Uh, it works really well. I really love the long handle. Uh, Lodge cast iron pans. I dislike the short handle. These guys have a nice long handle. I really enjoy that. Uh, I think the shape of it is excellent. The weight of it is balanced. Um, the pre-seasoning from the factory works actually. I like this better on a carbon steel pan than I do on their cast iron pan. I find that it's even maybe more textured or sorry, like a more uh, smooth, like uh, more micro textured. Um, it, it worked really, really well. So I would give it high marks. That said, when it comes to buying a pan within the price range, if you could buy a French made pan for the same price, then I wouldn't probably choose a lodge. I would buy Dubai or buy a Fur. So if it's apples to apples, but if this guy is considerably cheaper, if you can find it on sale, then this is an excellent, excellent pan to go for. I'm, uh, I'm really happy with it and I promote it and I definitely will keep it in our stock. Uh, so I hope that helps. Any questions, any comments, please throw them below. Thanks so much.